According to her arrest warrant, White and her 12-year-old daughter quickly became violent with driver Janetta Anderson, repeatedly punching her in the face and head. The document says when Anderson tried to push them off the bus, they dragged her off it by her heels. I admit it. I put the H on it to emphasize it's nigga. You know, nigga, nigga this, nigga, nigga please, nigga, you know, can you lend a nigga a pencil? What kind of example are you setting for your students if you use a word that you don't want them to use? It's time that we swat all these wasps. We've got to swat them. Get them out before they sting you. Also injuring a six-year-old girl in the process. Investigators then say White and her daughter fled the scene. Before turning herself in this morning, White explained to us why she was doing it. Her family says the boys were supposed to be transferred, but were only suspended. You know, I send my child to school and anybody behind me send their children to school for safety and to get an education, not to be touched on, not to be bullied. Two more students from Thomas Jefferson Middle School claim they were bullied, taunted by homophobic slurs, not only from other students, but also from teachers. So if the judicial system don't get involved and there start being some extensive things taken, then it's going to be more dead children. Terry Holliday tells WLKY the failure is unacceptable, but the school board and the principals of those schools say the term academic genocide is far from accurate. This is what Superintendent Donna Hargens had to say about the phrase. We work very collaboratively with KDE. Our schools work very collaboratively with KDE. I think everybody shares the sense of urgency uh, that the commissioner does. Uh, and, and so we share the common goal. We want success for all students in Jefferson County. The school board emphasizes that there is plenty of success in those underachieving schools, but improvement will take time. They called him gay. They talk about his face. They talk about his speech. They talk about it because he's a couple years behind. They talk about his age. In each case, parents say they notified the school of the alleged bullying. Attorney Teddy Gordon says if nothing changes, he'll continue to go after the school system. And we ask for justice in a court of law because we're not getting it in Jefferson County Public Schools. And we should mention that Keyshawn is still in Paul Dawson's classroom. Dawson has been with the district for 20 years, and Keyshawn is in, still, still in that classroom because Dawson is an honors English teacher. Mm -hmm. There are very few honors English classes, so he is still with him. JCPS did not return our calls for comment today, but in the past they have said that they have a long-standing policy of not commenting on pending litigation. None of the victims in these cases will be going back to the schools where the alleged bullying took place. I'm Lexi Sheen, WLKY News. Well, now he was suspended for a while, but is he back teaching? He is back teaching now, and he still does have his job. Uh, but this is not the first time that Paul Dawson has been suspended from Jefferson County Public Schools. Coming up at 5.30, we'll tell you what happened before, we'll tell you about his plan to appeal the suspension, and why the district says that he should keep his job. Thank you very much. I'm sure we haven't heard the last of this. Oh, no, lots right. more to come. Thank you. Our improvement just just hasn't been been there per se we have to do better right now at six the report card is released and the results are mixed when it comes to schools meeting the government's no child left behind requirements some Niroquai high school teacher is recovering tonight after the school's principal says he was assaulted by a student Andy Alcock spoke with the principal and a concerned parent about what happened Andy what did you find out Carissa, we're told an ambulance took the teacher to the hospital after he suffered a broken nose and cuts to the face. The student was arrested, suspended, and the principal has recommended him for alternative schooling. So they don't care about any virtues. They don't care about freedom, democracy, solidarity, spirituality, morality, ethics, or democracy. Nothing. They have no morality. They have no spirit. They have, they have nothing else except for obedience to authority. That's all they give a shit about. That's all they care. And most especially, they don't give a shit about real education. They don't care about real education. A psychotic professor oppressor is only one command away from being a psychotic professor oppressor child molester. You give them all that power, they're only one command away from becoming a psychotic professor oppressor child molester. WLKY's Daniel Kemp is live outside the Van Hoos Education Center to break the increase down. Daniel? 
Yeah, Vicky, school leaders say the move will generate about 17 million bucks for JCPS. That is money they say is much needed following years of state and federal funding cuts. It's a unanimous vote. All those in favor, motion passes. Thank you. That will affect all property owners in Jefferson County. Also new tonight at 10, principals give a loaded response after Kentucky's education commissioner says some county schools are committing academic genocide. Those strong words come on the heels of a report that shows 16 low-performing schools in our area. They're failing to improve despite millions of dollars being invested for that purpose. I'm going to vote for it. It isn't, like I said, popular, but if you want to be on the school board and stay popular, then you're running for the wrong office. On Monday night, the school board voted to boost the tax rate from 67.7 cents to 70 cents per $100 assessment. That means the owner of a house assessed at $100,000 would pay 23 more dollars on their taxes than last year, or the equivalent of about two bucks per month. This money is necessary, and there, we're doing everything we can as a school district, and I believe Dr. Hargens is doing everything she can as a superintendent uh, to cut costs and eliminate waste. Uh, magnanimous about it. Um, he's, we're all we're all adults and professionals, and that's how he handled it. And now the board says it will work together to find a replacement. I believe this, the board is unanimous in its um, desire to focus on student achievement, and uh, that we ensure we have a leader and management in place to address that. School district says budget cuts are one of the main reasons behind the cuts in staffing. WLKY's Drew Douglas is live from the Van Hoose Education Center with more on the potential impact in the classroom. Drew? Rick, the decision was also made based off of subject needs for the school district. By state law, the teachers were notified about the layoffs today. The 41 layoffs from Jefferson County Public Schools include 20 teachers from special education, 11 from English, 7 from physical education, and 1 from art. Jefferson County Teachers Association President Brent McKim says the changes could have a negative effect on students. School leaders say the hike would help compensate for more than $31 million in state funding cut since 2008, in addition to a number of federal programs that have been eliminated too. These are just only some items of what we're having to pick up now that we did not in the past. JCPS CFO Cordelia Hardin says the additional money will be used to put assistant principals in some schools and add more school programs. But a couple people at Monday's meeting spoke out in opposition to the tax increase. And, and I'm trying to understand it. I need help. Yes, I, I use nigga. I, I, I've, I've used it. Board of Education calls it a zero tolerance policy, but the citizens of Louisville organized and united together, or clout, calls it this school to prison pipeline. WLKY's Lexi Sheen is live this morning at the Van Hoos Board of Education with more on what clout is calling for. Good morning, Lexi. Good morning, Karen. Well, Clout says that the issue at hand is actually the JCPS suspension rate, saying that the zero tolerance policy is actually making schools more dangerous. JCPS, though, counters that, saying they're on the right track and have been making progress. J we need to swat these wasps. We're going to swat them, nip it in the bud before they sting you. Your federal and state funding has been cut. Well, so has my funding been cut. And we always say this is just a little bit, but this is just a little bit on top of everything else that we've had to raise. Still, board members agree that raising the tax rate is an investment in the future of JCPS. Sheldon Berman is in the last year of a four-year contract. That contract officially expires on June 30th, 2011. The board chairwoman says she fully expects Sheldon Berman to remain in his post until that date. However, once again, Sheldon Berman left this building before the vote was even taken, so he couldn't confirm tonight whether he will indeed remain in that post for the remainder of his contract. Uh, the board chairwoman did say that Berman assured the board that he would work hard to make sure the transition between himself and his successor is a very smooth one. As for that transition, the board is expected at its next meeting two weeks from tonight to begin mapping out both a transition plan and a plan for what the board chairwoman calls a very extensive search for Sheldon Berman's replacement. Live at the Van Hoose Education Center, I'm Steve Tellier, WLKY News. Mr. Boyd, Mr. President, good morning. Okay. All right, we're here for uh, another pre-trial. Judge, um, I did file the discovery in the court file um, 
that hadn't been done. It's, it's what I have right now is in there. The only thing that I see as being outstanding is uh, there was DNA sent to the local lab in July. And one of Dr. Berman's harshest critics has been Teddy Gordon, the attorney who had led a fight against the controversial student assignment and busing plan. Tonight, he had this reaction to the board's move. Quote, I am now hopeful that the Jefferson County Board of Education will finally hire a person who has the vision and creativity to improve the education for every student in this school system, in unquote. Here's some background on Dr. Berman's time here in Louisville. He came. We're a united board on this because we're, we're looking at the facts. And only three people from the community signed up to speak out at tonight's meeting. Two were, who were against the tax increase, one who was actually for it. Meantime, school leaders say folks will see that tax increase reflect on their bills in November. Live from the Van Hoos Education Center tonight, I'm Daniel Kemp to the LKY News. We just hope that by fall, the district will have found savings uh, from other parts of the budget to be able to restore the positions and uh, avoid class size increases and have uh, settings that give students the best chance to succeed. But Tiffany Gerstner, the director of recruitment and development for JCPS, says there is a state mandate capping the number of students per teacher that's different at each level. She says they will make sure every student is in a classroom at the cap or hopefully below. Students will not be impacted by this. This is that in certain areas we have a surplus of teachers. Let's talk about charter schools now. The fight for them, public charter schools in Kentucky, took center stage today in Frankfurt. A hearing on the bill took place this morning in the House Education Committee. Hundreds of parents were there. This is video of a previous rally. Advocates believe charters will lead more students to success. But opponents disagree, saying charter schools may negatively impact regular schools. Kentucky is one of nine states that do not allow charter schools. We're going to bring you full coverage of today's rally beginning this evening at 5. Three kids. Uh, I'll take credit for them all the time, but I do have three kids. Uh, student called me a while back and asked me to come and spend five minutes, so I'm going to have to talk kind of fast uh, about my, uh, my conversation, I guess, with the senator, but maybe more, maybe more importantly, the connection between early childhood care and crime. And I, I will tell you that uh, listening to uh, the speakers before me, they're absolutely correct. There is an absolute direct connection, correlation between early childhood care and crime. You know, uh, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. The goal of what what you pay, those of you who live or uh, work in the city and live and work in any city, what you pay the police department to do is help prevent crime from occurring. Uh, it is without a doubt a fact that we're not going to arrest ourselves out of this situation. The same thing happened with the Native Americans. When the Native Americans, their women were out in the field helping too. And the Native American men would hunt. And so when the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, you know, when the men were out in the fields and the women were inside the house, the Native Americans wondered why the European men were doing women's work. Students are going to receive the same level of education and service that they have always received. Gerstner says they're hoping they can rehire many of the teachers they are having to let go. She says they're still learning about staff retirements and specific classroom needs. If a school has more enrollment than we projected after the fifth day of school, which is when we do our fifth day count, we'll need more English teachers at schools where the enrollment is higher than we thought. A fight on a JCPS school bus ends one, sends one student to the hospital. The driver stopped the bus on the side of a busy Interstate 64 during rush hour. WLKY's Aaron Haynes joins us live from above I-64 with the very latest details. Aaron, this was, sounds like it could have been very dangerous. Absolutely, Vicki. The bus driver had to pull the bus over into the emergency lane on this stretch of I-64 West between Grinstead and Melwood to stop the fight and to get help. Unfortunately, school officials say these incidents are becoming more common. William Neal has a sixth grader at Newburgh Elementary. He's one of the parents who expressed concern with the layoffs. I think that they're understaffed and there's so many more kids, you know, going to schools. I think it's just unfortunate. 
Now, JCPS is also placing an additional 114 teachers on what's known as an overstaffed list. These teachers will not be laid off, but it is a possibility that they could be assigned to a new school next fall. There are not enough jails. The judicial system is not good enough. When you get locked up, you get rehabilitated, you come back to be a good citizen. It doesn't happen. That's TV stuff. For those who believe that, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, because the system's overly inundated, 